in this segment, how to trade yield curve spreads. Mikey Butler, you are newer to this game, but you've taken it up really quick. Hopefully, everybody else watching will be able to do the same because you've traded spreads before. I mean, mm-hmm. it's March Madness, baby. You've looked at the <laughs> spread between, you know, my my boys from Michigan are playing Villanova this week. And let's say that Villanova two seed, Michigan an 11 seed that's doing better than expected. The spread is probably Michigan plus, you know, six points or Villanova minus six points. At the end of the day, whether you're spreading yield curve uh, or spreading NCAA basketball, a spread is just the difference between two different markets that kind of equates them, right? I mean, what, what's your, how do you view spreads in any market? Yeah, I, I think um, you can trade these spreads in the way that you just mentioned. Um, the biggest, for me, the biggest correlation to like options trading is um, trading like earnings environment. So I just placed a trade on Nike where I'm long a call in the May cycle, very low implied volatility, uh, very low implied volatility contraction estimation. And then I'm short a call at a higher strike in the weekly cycle where you know there's a much greater implied volatility there. So I'm really just trading the spread between those implied volatility numbers. And if I get a bullish move in Nike, that's going to be amazing. But because I'm trading the spread, if we get a non-move in Nike, that trade can still be profitable and likely will be profitable because I'm going to see a huge contraction in the four-day, much closer to where the the option that I'm long in the May cycle is. And I know that that's going to happen uh, at a certain point, at least in the the next four days. So that's a, a really close correlation to options trading. But like you said, uh, you can trade spreads. I, I think live trading spreads is another great way to do it. So like, let's say you take one of your favorites um, and you know they you take the favorite for a hundred bucks, you get your, your, your spread or whatever, and they just, they go off. They, they're up 20 in the first half. Well, how can you hedge that? How can you turn that into a spread? Well, you just take the other side, give up five bucks, 10 bucks of your expected profitability, take the other team and create a spread where you're locking in profit regardless of what happens. And uh, that's one way to, to trade NCAA basketball for sure. But yeah, I think Love it. Yeah, trading these spreads and just recognizing the difference in the spreads. And I think for newer people, like for me, it was much harder to recognize those differences. Like I know you and Pete can look at a, a, a trade, like you can look at the two-year and 10-year and be like, ooh, this, there's a trade here because this is moving in a way that uh, is a, to a greater degree than the 10-year, let's say. But I think the pairs trading feature is a great way to mm-hmm. um, kind of neutralize that lack of information and knowledge. And just, you can graph and see like, where is this relationship? Is it on the lower end? Like we just looked at with USO and UGA. Is it on the lower end? Is it on the higher end? And you can take the inverse of whatever you, you think is going to happen and uh, you're playing for that. So that's really what I, in, in a long-winded way, looking at a difference and looking for um a really big divergence and playing for a convergence to what we think is going to happen is, is how I look at it across the board. Exactly right. It, like anything, whether it's, you know, NCAA basketball options and volatility or here interest rates, you have two similar things that have a, a difference between them. And when you take offsetting positions in those two different things, you're now playing the difference. You're not playing. It's not like, oh, I'm just buying both basketball teams. I'm not long the over, right? Mm-hmm. Like I just want points. No, I, I, I'm I'm long one side of the spread of these two things against each other. Right now, the yield curve is really close to flat, which is to say the difference between all these different yields across the curve, Mikey, are essentially zero. We're teetering on what could potentially be an inverted yield curve, whereby short-term rates are higher than longer-term rates, uh, still zeroing in on the relationship between two-year and 10-year rates. And you can see here, historically, we've gone inverted very just, just just for a brief moment back in 2019, which would be you know below this zero, like I say, flat would be zero, below that zero is inverted. And we don't tend to stay there long. You can trade these spread relationships, kind of like you were speaking to where it's like, oh, the favorite is favored by six points 
they, they have a really good first half. Now they're favored by 20 or 30 points and you maybe sell those 20 or 30 points on it coming back to, you know, six to 10 points, something closer to what would be the mean. You can do the same in interest rates here. You could have, you know, sold those 10 year rates and bought two year rates when that spread was really high, it came mm-hmm. back and now it's back to a low and we'd be looking at, you know, trading this yield curve spread. How would you do it today? Well, you would look at if you're if you're looking for a mean reversion, buying the small 10 year and selling that small 2 year on this thing bouncing off of near zero back to the mean. Is that all making sense? Yeah, 100%. And I think uh even if you're thinking of like the E-mini, like S&P 500 versus the Nasdaq, very highly correlated the two products together. Um, but there's going to be days, and there have been many days in the past couple of weeks where you'll see the, the NASDAQ just jump and it'll be up like 1% or percent and a half, and you'll see the E mini is just flat. So you could short the Qs, get long SPY. You know, these are very highly correlated products, and you can trade it in that fashion too. So lots of different ways to trade spreads. Uh, if, you, if you just understand the basics of spreads, you can apply it to many different things. And here is that great pairs trader or spread trader in the platform. You're just looking at taking offsetting positions in two markets. Here, we were looking at buying the 10-year rate and selling the two-year rate, the anti-inversion. If you think the market is going to go inverted, you would just do the opposite, buy that two-year and sell that.